Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. I'm going to continue my unboxing spree here for Rife Busters Project Vril. This is the cargo hold box. This contains all the stretch goals from the Kickstarter campaign. And one thing I want to correct from my last unboxing video, which was for the core box, is within this sleeve. Now, during my unboxing in the last video, this was a sleeve that was inside that core box. And when we went ahead and removed this cardboard sleeve here we see a bunch of plastic player trays we also see big miniatures well i thought that's where it ended but there's actually miniatures underneath the tray i didn't even notice when i was actually doing the unboxing so if you go ahead and lift this off and take a look you're going to notice right off the bat here once the player boards are removed that there's a bunch of minis hiding underneath so when i mentioned that the player hero minis are going to come separately within the cargo hold box only that was incorrect there are six inside the core experience and then of course there's even more inside cargo hold so without further ado let's check out this game from mythic games by first starting off with these minis that you haven't seen some of which like these ones here are zombies this one here is a scientist so we've seen these sculpts before but there's two unique ones here we've already checked this one out and we definitely haven't checked out the heroes the first mini right out of the gate is Sarge, a very cool pose for him, great detail, looking like he's on the move. He's also holding himself a weapon in the opposite hand as well, he's got them on his backpack, looking pretty good, base is awesome, definitely digging this one. The next hero is Claudine, she's looking pretty awesome, got her foot up on a box there, and we'll go ahead and just rotate so you can see all the detail on her. It's fantastic stuff all the way around. Here we have a Red Hawk, a very, very epic pose. He's got his foot up on the box there. His cape is going in the wind. Long sniper rifle at the ready, looking pretty, pretty awesome. This is a really cool miniature. You can see there's a little bit of a bend here going on, but again, some hot water and a quick, uh, you know, push down on that end and then some cold water and that'll be perfectly straight, but it's really not even that bad of a bend at all. Just a slight one but it looks so, so good. Quentin is up next, definitely wants to be up close and personal with his dual knives he's got going on there. And look at all the stuff attached to this guy. Again, the backpack has great detail. He's got stuff hanging off him from every angle. Looks great. Again, the bases across all these are very unique and cool. I'll say that over and over again. I love that they went to that level to make sure that that was, uh, you know, etched in there so you can actually paint that out if you want to. Looking great. Brick here is absolutely massive. This guy is ripped, as you can see, his arms there as he holds these massive guns. I mean, he pretty much needs some big time muscles in order to handle these guns in the first place. Check out the ammo clips flying off the side of these things. Looking awesome. Again, great detail. And this is honestly one of the coolest looking poses of all of them. And this right here is an individual known as O'Reilly, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know too much about this character, but we might learn a little bit more as we dive into the cargo box. But he's definitely got a very unique thing going on with him. Very different, doesn't look to be in the uh, prime shape. Here is another enemy. This is a really unique sculpt, so I thought I would show this one off from all angles so you guys can see it. Now, there are a number of other zombies and different things that we've already seen in there. There's one other unique sculpt I'd like to show you as well. And that's of General Wolf. Check this thing out. Looking pretty good. Very, very detailed all the way around. The General is very much rigged up. So with the minis out of the way that I missed from the core box, now let's go ahead and check out specifically what comes inside the cargo hold box. This is the back of the box. It has the same title, same artwork, look and style as the core box in terms of having nothing on the back that's worth reading. So let's go ahead and dive inside, see all the components that this thing has for us. When you first open up the box, this is what you're gonna see. A gigantic box here of miniatures underneath. You're gonna see the cards that go along with those miniatures and all kinds of decks of cards across the top here we got a filler area right here we'll remove this quickly and that'll allow me access to all these decks of cards of which there are four of them it seems so let's go ahead and remove all four of these we'll wait until the end of the unboxing to actually go through each of these decks there is a ton here 
It's worth noting out of these four different bricks of cards that there's two of them that are specific to English and two for other language. So I'll be focusing only on the English ones when I open them up. After the miniature box is removed, you'll find yourself a mission at the very bottom here. And there's also another language below it. I'll focus on the English one on top. This one's all about unlocking O'Reilly. So if you're wondering who O'Reilly was, that was the last miniature that we looked at from the heroes in that core box insert that I showed you at the beginning of the video. The one where the guy was kind of hunched over with a sledgehammer. That's O'Reilly. So you can unlock him inside of a raid. You can also try to unlock him inside of a campaign and this is essentially how that all goes down you got mission objectives special rules mission complete all that good stuff plus on the opposite side you have a full-blown setup for that mission which is going to have you trying to unlock or rescue him which is pretty awesome Next up, you're going to be greeted by a bunch of token punch boards at the bottom of this box. There are four of them. I'm going to go ahead and pull them all out. And again, there's language dependent tokens. So I'll be focusing just on the English ones. Here is the token punch board in English. As you can see here, we got a whole bunch of weapons here. We've got axes, sledgehammers, pistols, knives, machetes, all kinds of stuff going on here. We even flamethrowers and stuff like that. Up top, we've got skill tokens. After removing the cardboard sleeve from this miniature pack, you can see, well, it's full of a ton of miniatures. Now, my understanding is that there's gonna be a number of these that are unique and some might be alternate sculpts. So don't quote me on anything that I'm gonna say as I go through these, but I'd like to show you all the unique sculpts that I'm seeing as I go through. So there are some that have multiples, like this one looks to be a soldier. There's about eight of them. I'll show you one of them. We'll go through each of these different sets one by one so you can see them up close. And then we'll also go through the cards. So the first one we have here is definitely looking like a soldier and as I mentioned there's eight of them inside the box. The sculpt looks pretty awesome. Great detail all the way around. This next character definitely enjoys hugging canisters. He seems to really want to hold on to that thing. I got a funny feeling that that's a bad news type situation for the heroes. This next miniature is called the detector. Looks like a giant walking computer pretty much. My guess is that it's all about noise there, but I'm not 100% sure. This next miniature kind of resembles an alternate art similar to Experiment 6XX we saw from the core box. Not sure if that's the case, but it sure looks pretty close. And this next miniature certainly looks like a zombie, a certainly a different styled zombie, so possibly another alternate artwork for this zombie miniature. I could be wrong with that, but that would be my guess. Now I'm not 100% sure on this one, but there is an arrow on it. I wanted to say it was an alarm miniature, but it might actually be the mission tracker. There is a round marker inside the core game for a token, so this would make sense being that it's a rectangle. Seems like it would fit, but I could be wrong. And these are just awesome. You've got dog tags for each of the player turns, so that's pretty cool. And uh, they're engraved with a number on the back of them as well. So before we move to the second tray of miniatures, let's go through the cards that were on the top tray. This will also help us potentially identify some of the miniatures we just saw. We've got Experiment 1080A. I haven't seen that one yet. This one is definitely a new one as well. And you can go ahead and pause the screen if you want to read any of the uh, abilities for these particular units. Again, the artwork is absolutely awesome. There's the soldiers. We definitely saw them. There's your zombies. That looks like I might have been right about the zombie one. Detector. Uber Soldaten, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but this guy has a crazy pose. What I really like too is they're using up as much artwork area as possible when there's not as many abilities, which is really cool. I like that because they're, they're kind of filling in the whole card with as much art as possible, which I like. Sentry Gun. And then the back here, these look to be, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, we got one mission card here for the O'Reilly mission. And then these are raid cards. So you can go ahead and pause if you want to read those, but that's basically the setup for the raid stuff. If you flip them over, you can get a good idea as to what they look like on the back. This is what a mission back of the card looks like. This is what a raid faction card looks like. So a couple of raid factions in there. And, uh, and then I don't know, but I'll just do a quick shuffle through here. To one the, yeah, this is the back art of these cards and they are really cool. I'll show you just the one because I think they're all the same. Let 
Ah, these ones have multiple sides, which is quite interesting. So this guy here is fanatical on one side at the top. And if I flip him over to the opposite side, duelist. Interesting. Okay, so it's worth showing you guys both sides of those. A paranoid master, we saw that before. And entangle on this side. Moving on down to the second tier of this miniature box, you can see we've got ourselves a huge one over here and some of the really cool poses I was talking about earlier. So let's go through these again. You've got all kinds of new heroes to use as well. First hero out of the box, this is what he looks like. He has definitely been working out, that's for sure. This guy's a monster. He's got himself a machete, it looks like. He's got himself a shotgun on the back. Pretty awesome character indeed. Now this is a cool pose. Check this out. This guy's sitting on a drum. That is so awesome. Loving it. And uh, we'll just keep rotating this around so you can enjoy it from all angles. Next hero here is going in cautiously. He's got his gun drawn, but he hasn't seen anything just yet. Got himself a nice big backpack there. This guy's pose makes him look like he's pretty sure of himself, like he's got things kind of under control and handled. Again, loving the detail, even down to the pants and all the different wrinkles and everything inside of them. They went the extra mile on that. It's going to look fantastic if you go crazy painting these things. This next hero is certainly packing some heat for sure, looking pretty awesome. Wouldn't want to get in front of this guy. Never mind, you might not want to get in front of this guy actually instead. Check him out. He means business for sure. And as the saying goes, you never bring a knife to a gunfight, so always have both. That's probably the best thing to do. And that's exactly what this hero's got going for him. I really like this one. I love that army helmet look. Looks so, so cool. So this guy's just going in. He's got his pistol drawn. He's got his knife at the ready. That's a great pose. I love that one. Here we have a hero that wants to go in as stealthy as possible. Again, the nice cape there blowing in the wind, the back of a uh, jacket, and then another silenced pistol, it looks like, to her left side. Now this is a pose. This guy's basically just saying, come at me. Like, he wants everybody to come at him. He's got his axe ready, his pistol out. He does not care at all. It's going to pretty much take on the world. And this by far has to be the coolest pose in the entire set. This guy is basically up on top of a crate, kind of looks like it's teetering over, and he's still just guns blazing from all angles. Check this thing out. I don't even know what to say about this thing. It's got stuff coming out of its mouth, out of its other mouth, and then out of its other mouth. It is definitely not a creature you're going to want to run into. This thing is pretty terrifying. But the detail is really awesome. This is definitely uh, the kind of guy who skips uh, leg day at the gym for sure. But he's got that upper body strength for sure. <laughs> These are beginning to get weirder and weirder. I don't even know what I'm looking at right now. It's basically like tentacles coming out of somebody's arm. It's pretty crazy looking. Also something you don't want to run into in the hallways. There are two of these turns inside the box. They look great from every angle. They look nice and worn too, like they've gotten uh, quite a bit of beating on them as well. Here's another style of the turret. There was two of that last turn I just showed. This one is by far one of my favorite poses for the enemies. I just love it, this gigantic sludge hammer kind of coming down at you. It's such a cool pose. The guy's really bulky and there's lots of detail on him as well. Here's here we have some officers that have seen better days using a cane to get around as they're obviously badly, badly infected by this stuff. Another very unique pose is the first time I'm seeing a sword inside the game to this point. And there's four of these things inside the box, and I believe that there was a handful of these in the core box as well, but this appears to be an alternate sculpt. 
And last but certainly not least, this absolute behemoth, another gigantic, what looks to be basically a mech, pretty much, with all this metal, a full-on shield, like that's just ridiculous. The gun is insane. It's like a Gatling gun to the next level. This is just an amazing miniature, so anyone painting is going to have a field day with this one with all the different areas. Uh, I imagine that you could also do some really cool stuff there with shadowing and stuff like this and having kind of glowing uh, elements going on. Oh, so good all the way around. This thing, even unpainted, is fantastic. Now we've got two bricks worth of cards to go through. We're starting off with O'Reilly here on the back. So they're going to be the same artwork for all these because these are the character cards. Here's O'Reilly on one side. Again, feel free to pause if you want to read uh, Flame and Joe. For now, I'm really just showing the backsides of most of these characters. Again, now we actually have names to the different miniatures that you saw from earlier on. So should be able to connect a handful of them at least. This is the Prof. Remy. We got Hans. And we've got Tane. Let's go ahead and flip this over and take a look at all these cards. So starting on the other side of the deck, we've got Tane beginning things off and we'll go through his deck again. We'll be able to speak to most of this stuff because it's brand new to me as well. But if you feel like taking a look by pausing, feel free. I'll go through them at a quick pace enough that we can get through them. Again, a lot of this won't make too much sense to you to start playing the game, but it's good to see these sometimes. And again, these are also nice. The narrative behind each of the characters is worth checking out. Certainly not going to be uh, starving for heroes to pick from when building out your army. You're going to have lots and lots of options, which is really, really good. If you got this stretch goal box, which is pretty awesome, is that th they threw this much stuff in there. Because uh, it really is almost like another entire core set based on how many miniatures were in there. A two-tiered uh, two layer there of stuff. And then even on top of it, one of those giant mech things again. So that was kind of crazy to see. Flame and Joe. Burn, baby, burn. Disco Inferno. I love the little snippets there that are very thematic to each of the characters. The terms that they're using. There's O'Reilly, an unlockable character in the campaign or something you can throw in, or someone you can throw into a raid situation easily. That is going to do it for this deck of cards. We've got all the way to the back, so there's only one more to go. So just like the last deck of cards, we'll start at the back here. So this is Brad. He's got a whole bunch of cards. Stop when we get to his character card so you guys can observe that. Then we've got Kilber, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is his card here. Next up we got Bajorn. This is the guy that uh, does not care about anything and wants to take on the world. Next up, we have a medic called Doc. That's uh, <laughs> that's exactly what you'd expect. And then we got Boshka, if I'm pronouncing that one correctly as well. And last but not least, we have Arena. Irina. I want to say Irina. It made it sound like it was more like an, an arena, but it's Irina. And there we go. That's for those. We'll flip them over now and take a look at all the cards. We'll stop so you guys are able to read these if you so wish to. We'll go through each of these cards for each of these characters. Scouting, spy. So you get a little you get kind of learn about a little bit about them just by reading the text on the card itself. Chain kill, crack shot, ambush. I'm skipping a couple cards here. Sneak attack. Here's the next one. Boshka for Mother Russia, Barrels of Fun, Revolution, Comrade, Grenades, Lefty Lucy, Stain for Time, There's 
Doc. Doctor in the house. Hard pill to swallow. Patch up, poppin' pills. Emergency call out. Bone to pick. The cure. Medic. I saw red. Bajorn here. Valhalla waits. Tell no lies. Odin's wrath. Loki, Loki. For Thor. Ask no questions. I love this stuff. That's great. The play on words in this in this in these decks is fantastic. Uh, Kilber, Elite Warrior, Ghost, Bravery, Consolidate, Unfazed, and Brad. That is going to be the last one. Shock and awe, right? Lead the way, all the way, of their own accord. Elite Fighter, Special Forces, Brothers in Arms, and Hoorah! Experiment Table also comes as a feature card inside of the box and on the opposite side, even though this does not look pleasant at all, this refers to O'Reilly. That's the hero that you can go into during the campaign to try and rescue, so that's pretty cool. And that's going to do it for the unboxing for Cargo Hold. Stay tuned as you'll see other unboxings for Project X as well as Not of This World. Two more boxes for this particular game. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this is informative and also gives you something to check out prior to the Kickstarter delivering. Thanks again as always. Keep on rolling solo.